Members Kincaillen and Julianne Hirsch, uh, welcome. We Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to your service on the board. Uh, first item, approval of minutes of April 9, 2018 regular meeting. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes of the April 9, 2018 regular meeting as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? And abstaining? Very good. I was absent from the meeting, as were two prior selectmen. Um, next, approval of minutes of April 23rd, 2018 special meeting. This is our meeting immediately preceding town meeting. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the April 23rd, 2018 special meeting minutes as approved, as submitted. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Abstentions? Thank you. And next, election of officers. We have town clerk Andy Dowd here to conduct the proceedings. Welcome, Andy. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, annually, after the town election, um, the board uh, at its first meeting thereafter um, reorganizes itself as far as the positions of the board, and I'm here to facilitate that this evening. Um, so first, I will call for nominations for chair of the board. Wesley? I'd like to nominate Don Rand for chair. Okay, nomination for Don. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded. Any other nominations for chair? Hearing none, I'll close the nominations for chair. All those in favor of Don Rand as chair. Congratulations, Mrs. Thank you. Rand. And next for vice chair, I'll call for nominations. Don? Uh, I move Jason Peralt become the vice chair. Okay. Second. And seconded. Any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, I'll close that nomination. All those in favor is Jason for vice chair. Please raise your hand. Congratulations, sir. And we have to move down one seat. And last, uh, the board uh, nominates a uh, clerk. So at this time, I'll call for nominations for clerk of the board. Don? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Clerk. Um, I move, I nominate Leslie Rutan as clerk. Okay, Leslie Fitcher. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded. Any other nominations for clerk? Hearing none, I'll close those nominations. All those in favor of Leslie Rutan for clerk? Congratulations. Yeah. Have a great Thank you, year. Andy. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome. Thank you, Andy. Don't forget to take your name plates when you shuffle. <laughs> or you'll confuse everybody. <laughs> First, I'd just like to thank everyone, and I hope that I can do this as well as Jason did for the previous year. Um, you were amazing. So. Uh, the next item is our hearing, 7.05 uh, p.m. to consider a request from Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza of Northborough, LLC, for a change of office's beneficial interest for all their, for their all alcoholic beverages restaurant license for premises located at 10002B Shops Way. Dave Crumsick. I'm an attorney. I represent Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza. It's a simple change of uh, officers. We actually have a couple of moving parts here. Uh, Wayne Jones and uh, Michelle Zavolta are the petitioners to become uh, uh, manager and president and secretary, respectively, replacing Anthony Bruno and Charles E. Locke, Jr. Also, uh, a little higher in the corporate chain is a proposed uh, petition by Michael Hislop, replacing uh, Henrik Falkoff, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Pretty straightforward stuff. These are uh, officers. They're not. Uh, they don't have a beneficial interest in the, in the license. Okay. And this has been reviewed by the police department, and there's no concerns. No concerns. Uh, any questions from the board? Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, do I hear a motion? I move the board vote to approve the application as submitted by Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza of Northboro LLC for a change of officers' beneficial interest 
for their all alcoholic beverages restaurant license for premises located at 10002B Shops Way. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. He's actually I'm pausing because we might have another one. Oh, he's staying the Very efficient. Okay. <laughs> Don't so. want to get too much exercise here. <laughs> 705, a hearing. To <clears throat> consider a request from Wegmans, Massachusetts, Inc. for a change of officer beneficial interest for all, all alcoholic restaurant license for premises located at 9102-9104 Shops Way. Okay, again, David Crumsick for this time for Wegmans. Uh, uh, Massachusetts Inc. DBA Wegmans. Uh, similarly, this petition involves another change of officer. Uh, James uh, J. Leo uh, is being replaced by Stephen R. Van Arsdale. But again, simple uh, change of officer petition. And once again, this has already been uh, reviewed by the police department. Any other concerns? No. Okay. Any questions? Hearing no questions, do I hear a motion? I move the board vote to approve the application as submitted by Wegmans, Massachusetts, Inc. for a change of officer of beneficial interest for their all-alcoholic beverages restaurant license for premises located at 9102-9104 Shops Way. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Oh, any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, it's not quite 710, so let's start reports. Juliana? Starting with reports. Um, no, I don't have any reports at this time. Okay, thank you. Tim? Uh, I just wanted to take a minute to thank um, Jeff Amberson and Bill Pantazas for their service on the, the Board of Selectmen over the last uh, number of years. Uh, they did a great job, and I'm excited to get the opportunity to, uh, to be part of the board and help Northboro grow. Okay, thank you. Leslie? Okay, I'd also like to congratulate again Julianne and, and Tim um, on your campaigns and, and winning a seat on the board. I think you'll enjoy it very much. A lot of interesting things come before us, so, <laughs> so welcome. Um, and I also wanted to thank Bill and Jeff, too. Uh, they served for many, many years on this committee, and were very dedicated to the town of Northborough. And, and they spoke their minds and uh, made everybody well aware of their opinions, and I think that's, that's important. That's what this board is for. So I wanted to thank them publicly for that as well. Uh, the interview committee met this evening, um, and I have two motions I'd like to make. The first is I move the board vote to appoint Jessica Hay to the Community Affairs Committee for a three-year term. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries. And I move the board vote to appoint Pamela Markey to the Community Affairs Committee for a three-year term. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? And I'd like to thank both of them for volunteering. That's a great committee to be on. Mm. And that is um, chaired by Lisa Hodge. So she does a great job. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is a letter that was received by the fire department. I uh, don't really have the date on this, but it was written by a gentleman who had suffered a major heart attack at his home. And he was very impressed by how well cared for both he and his wife were. It's really an exceptional letter. Um, in addition to the fact that he enclosed a check with the letter um, to take care of some, some <coughs> things for the fire department, he went on and on about how grateful he was, um, just in the manner that the way he was cared for, the way his house was locked up and closed up so that they could both leave and his wife could ride in the ambulance. So I wanted to publicly thank Captain Dan Brillhart, Firefighter Chris Tetralt, Firefighter Steve Brosk, and Firefighter Mike Gaudet. Um, it's definitely worthy of mention, and I think that it's important to mention these kind of things because oftentimes we hear negative things, but when someone takes the time to write a pretty lengthy letter, about how well they were cared for and the fact that they owe their life really to, to your care. It's important to mention. So thank you very much. If you could pass along our wishes for that. I'd also like to mention a letter that the police department received um, from a gentleman who said that he had, this is written in March, reason to interact with one of the officers, Officer Murphy. Um, 
and he was concerned about some things following the incident and had spoken with your department a few times about some things, but was particularly happy with Officer Murphy and the way Officer Murphy dealt with any concerns that he had about the incident and any kind of follow-up that would occur. And he was just uh, saying how incredibly proud he is to be in a community with such a great police department who looks out for his well-being. So if you could pass that along to him as well. Thank you very much. These letters are great. Um, I also wanted to ask John um, if we could find, what's the latest with the RMT building? I still hear a lot about that. I know we ask you that every couple months, but yep. <laughs> what really is the status in terms of, is there anything in arrears? What is, what is the status of the, the condition of that building? Well, the town has gone through the process uh, to get authorization to uh, d demolish the building if the owner does not take uh, corrective action. Um, something like that what we would do is uh, wait until uh, we get to the end of the fiscal year so that we can determine uh, what we have for funds um, and decide whether or not that's an action that we want to take so we pursued the administrative end of it to get the, the uh, uh, all the due process out of the way working with town council so that uh, by the end of the uh, towards the end of the fiscal year um, if we if we so choose uh, and the owner does not take corrective action the town would have the option to demolish the building uh, when we take action like that it's at our it's on our dime uh, we do then put a lien on the property um, however uh, the town does need to come up with those funds as you know every year as part of the budget um, we have a hundred seventy five thousand uh, dollar emergency basically a uh, appropriations committee reserve account it's essentially a, a reserve account uh, for unforeseen issues or, or situations so normally what we want to do is we want to get through the winter and see where we are in terms of our snow and ice budget. Uh, imagine we're getting ready to close that out at this point. Uh, and then we'll have a sense of what we have uh, left to see if we have any other issues or demands on our resources, you know, at the end of the fiscal year. Okay. So is this something that you could keep us apprised of? Absolutely. Would you like me to keep <laughs> bringing it up? <laughs> no, that, um, it, it's fine. Either fine. way, you know, if you inquire. I mean, basically what we need to do is... Uh, as we get, as we, as I said, as we, we're, we're now in the area where we're getting close to closing out the fiscal year, which ends July, uh, June 30th, mm -hmm. um, we then still need to close the books and actually close out to see where we are. Year-end transfers, if necessary, uh, would take place uh, at your June meeting. At this point, uh, the financial team isn't anticipating uh, any uh, year-end transfers that would require the Board of Selectmen's authority. Mm -hmm. um, Again, the $175,000 uh, Appropriations Committee Reserve Account, those transfers can be made solely under their authority. Uh, so right now we're anticipating any shortfalls, snow and ice shortfalls basically would require, um, uh, would be handled through that reserve account at this point. Okay. So, uh, but again, we're waiting where as we start to close down the books, we'll have a better sense of where we are. Uh, what we do is we would be able to uh, move forward and we can encumber the funds necessary if we're going to do something with that particular structure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you very much. You're welcome. And my final comment is um, just a reminder to everyone not to forget about the food pantry during the summer months. Um, as a quote, one of my favorite quotes is, hunger knows no season. So I think that in the summertime, people tend to forget. They get busy. It's, that they don't, it's not that they don't mean well, but I think that it's important for us to remember. The good, a good website is nfpantry.org, and it will give you a list of some things in particular that are, that are needed at this time. So if we ask you to remember that, that would be great. So thank you very much. That ends my report. Thank you. Jason? Uh, please pardon my use of my phone to keep track of all my notes. I have a few things to say tonight. <laughs> Uh, one is uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, hope you had a very enjoyable uh, day yesterday. There were a lot of uh, very nice photos on social media, and one in particular, Mrs. Pat Griffin <laughs> racing around a track in a pink race car. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think I'll ever see a photo on Mother's Day that will top that. So. Uh, I'd also like to uh, um, Make mention that the uh, junior prom at Algonquin Regional High School is being held this Saturday night, uh, May uh, 19th. Following the prom, we normally hold a post-prom party at New England Sports Center, which requires some number of volunteers to serve as chaperones uh, overnight, 11.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sunday morning. Um, it's a very excellent program put on by volunteers, uh, a lot of activities for the kids. 
Um, they get to, uh, they have a, typically a mechanical bull, an obstacle course, a hypnotist, <laughs> which isn't too R-rated, um, and also they open up one of the ice rinks so the, uh, the kids have the opportunity to put on some skates and, and get out there. Uh, I'll be doing it after a two-year absence from it, uh, uh, again this Saturday, but I understand they are short on volunteers, <coughs> particularly for the overnight component of that. So if you know anybody or you're willing to volunteer yourself, we certainly would appreciate the extra help. It's uh, just a uh, kind of event that tries to make it a, a very safe evening for the kids and a very uh, uh, peace of mind evening for their parents. Um, typically, the parents of the juniors are not allowed to volunteer. I'm not sure if we're relaxing it this year because of the need for volunteers, but. Um, we certainly uh, hope we'll have enough people to carry out that program. Uh, I would like uh, also to once again congratulate Tim and Julianne on their election to the board. Also uh, to congratulate and thank um, Jeff Amberson and uh, Bill Pantazis for their long years of service. They, they made many contributions uh, to the town, uh, to this board, um, to other boards they served on throughout that period. Um, we just really appreciate all of their work and uh, all of their uh, uh, contributions. Um, just very much appreciated. <coughs> I'd like to thank uh, town moderator Fred George, town clerk Andy Dowd, um, all the town meeting election workers and the audiovisual support we had at town meeting. Once again, it's quite a large effort. We appreciate all the work that those people put in uh, to make it happen. Uh, thank John. Uh, Coderre, town administrator, and his financial team, Kim Foster, um, June Hubbard Ward, and Jason Little, town accountant, uh, for all the work they put in preceding it to get the budget in order to put out the fires that invariably occur um, uh, very shortly before town meeting. And also to uh, uh, thanks to Superintendent uh, Christine Johnson, the school staff, and the school committees um, for their uh, portion of that, which is the school budget. Um, very much appreciative. I think the evening went pretty well. Uh, it was a very late evening. It's always a toss up whether to try to complete all the business in a single evening or have it carried to a second night, not being sure if you're going to get a quorum on the second night in order to conduct that business. So uh, we did have a number of uh, citizens who <coughs> stayed through, persevered, and got it done. We really appreciate uh, the turnout. We really appreciate uh, the fact that they were willing to put in that time through a very late night uh, to help us get through all the warrant articles and get the business completed. And I th think that concludes <coughs> my report. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm sorry, one more thing. Congratulations, Don, uh, uh, as our next chair, once again. Um, Leslie, thank you for your service also. Oh, thank I want to thank everybody for, my, for all the assistance and guidance they provided to me for my first uh, campaign as chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Anything I did right is probably due to the advice and guidance of my fellow board members. Anything that went wrong, <laughs> I'll take full responsibility <laughs> myself. So, appreciate it. You did a great job. That concludes my report. So, and thanks again for all, all you did. <coughs> um, ditto on the congratulations and the thanks to the incoming selectmen and the outgoing selectmen. Um, I had the fun time of doing with, uh, working with the fire station building committee and doing road trips. You act like it's not a good time. It was a good time. <laughs> my, my husband's gotten to the point he wonders what else I'm going to tell him about fire stations. So we went to five um, relatively new fire stations to view them and see what went right and what went wrong in their um, building. So it will help us with the process. And we have another bill out building committee meeting next Wednesday, correct, John? Correct. 10 o'clock in the morning. So. Um, I'd like to thank the DPW um, for all the work they've already done around the center of town um, and the cemeteries and the monuments. Everything's starting to look so good. And um, we were a little ahead of schedule before Memorial Day, but thank everybody for their hard work because it really does look great. And speaking of Memorial Day, the parade is on Memorial Day. I won't be able to march this year, but the starting time is what, John? Uh, the step off is at 12 noon at the Civil War Monument okay. in downtown. So, and the board has been all been invited, um, so I think everyone knows that. So, um, and again, a thank you on the elections to, um, as far as the way the elections and town meeting were handled um, by Andy Dowd and his staff, and then town meeting, John and his staff. Um, and just like to remind the board and the people out there that our next meeting 
um, is June 11th. We go into our summer schedule, so we'll only be meeting once a month. So the next time this board will meet <coughs> is June 11th. And that concludes my report. John? Uh, two brief items. One, I just want to give the board an update with regard to state aid. Uh, it's always a unique process trying to determine your budget before you know your revenues. Uh, you know, uh, typically, state aid for us uh, is about 10% of, um, of our revenues. And we don't know what our state aid number, our final state aid number is, uh, usually until June or July. And as you know, town meeting is uh, the fourth Monday in April. That's when we actually set our budget. Um, but as the process unfolds, uh, we typically will use the governor's budget number, which comes out uh, at the end of January. Uh, since then, we got the House budget, and uh, last week the Senate released their numbers. Usually we do a little bit better with each iteration from the governor to the House to the Senate, assuming the economy is not in free fall. Um, so uh, according to the numbers released by the Senate, uh, the good news is the um, the state aid from the Senate numbers would be up about 48,000. The bad news is their assessments are also up by about 13,000, which means net it's a little over 34,000 in additional state aid that we would be budgeting, uh, uh, that we would be receiving. Um, for those that don't know, uh, in terms of state aid, the number that we go to town meeting with um, is what we, and it's usually a conservative number because we don't know anything. We're using the governor's number. Um, any state aid that we receive above that figure, when it ultimately comes in, uh, come fall when we set the tax rate, that has to be applied towards reducing the tax impact. So despite the fact that we are conservative, you know, some towns will try to guess and, and try to budget on a number that's a little bit higher. We tend to be more conservative, knowing that if we get a little bit more state aid, come time to set the tax rate in November, the only place that can go is to reduce the tax impact. Uh, so it's positive news, but the reality is on a 60 plus million dollar budget, 34,000 isn't going to really have any, any significant impact either way. The good news is that the number is moving, and at least it's moving in a positive direction. We've been through significant uh, years where that number actually went the opposite way by six figures, and that would require us to take some action. So no action required, it's positive news. Uh, the only other thing I'd share with you this evening is uh, tomorrow uh, I will be having our bond rating uh, review call with Moody's Investor Service. Um, the town is uh, planning to issue $5.2 million in bonds. Uh, there's about 2.7 in bond anticipation notes and about $2.5 million in uh, permanent debt. So the way the schedule would work is we'd have our call tomorrow. Uh, they'll then take that information and get back to us in terms of our rating. Right now we're a AA1 community. It's the highest rating the town's ever had. Our goal is to maintain that rating. Um, the release uh, will be May 24th. The sale of bonds will happen on May 31st. And then what will happen is your next meeting, which is June 11th, uh, the finance director will come before you with the results of the bonds and the bonds themselves to be executed by the board. So that's something you should anticipate for your next meeting, and usually it requires um, about 20 minutes of signing. So come prepared with a good, with a good pen. Um, we anticipate, uh, again, we anticipate that we should have um, a, good, a good result. We tend, to, um, we tend to be very desirable when we enter into the bond market and, uh, and get good results. So we're, we're hoping we'll, we'll be able to come back with a, a low interest rate based on our on our uh, rating, and, uh, and we can move forward from there. Thank you, John. Okay. Okay. Back to our 710 Kathy Dubert Town Planner. Acceptance of the donation of two parcels of open space land known as Zero Howard Street, assesses map 4, parcel 3, 4.02 acres, and map 4, parcel 4, 2.51 acres. Kathy? Good evening, everybody. Um, you should have all received a, um, well, I know you did, you received a, <laughs> a, a memo from me um, with also a um, map attached, um, which shows where the, these two parcels are. They're across the street from each other, um, as far out as you can go on Howard Street, um, just before you get to the Berlin town line. So one of the parcels, um, actually let me back up a second, the, the Conservation Commission by state law um, has the ability to accept um, donations of, of money and also donations of land. 
and um, without having to go to town meeting. But part of the process is, is that it also needs to obviously come to the Board of Selectmen. So this is why I'm here before you tonight. Um, a landowner approached the Conservation Commission probably six to eight months or so ago um, asking if the Conservation Commission would be interested in these two parcels. They're very small parcels for, as far as open space goes. Um, the, the parcel that's on the, the westerly side, which actually on your map is sort of shown in the navy blue, that's the four, um, approximately four acre parcel. That directly abuts Mount Pisgah, town-owned conservation property, and we already have a trail on that property. Uh, years ago, the Trails Committee approached the landowner um, and asked if we could put a, a trail up there. It's a bit of a challenge. It's more of a, a, of a goat trail than a, <laughs> than a, than a quick, easy um, hike, but, um, but it is one way to get up to Mount Pisgah um, if you wanted to, as opposed to going up on Smith Road. So that, uh, that parcel is about four acres in size. The parcel that's across the street, um, although it's not connected to Northborough, you know, town-owned land, um, it is owned by the same property owner and uh, sort of comes part and parcel. Um, so they asked the Conservation Commission if they would be interested in accepting the donation of both of those parcels. The Conservation Commission said yes, and then we went through all our due diligence with town council. And um, so we're here tonight with, you know, having gone through the review with town council, the tax review, um, and what you have before you is called um, uh, uh, the acceptance form, um, which would require, if you so chose to um, accept these parcels, and we hope that you do, um, but it requires a signature of the Board of Selectmen, and then after I'm through with you, I'm going down to the Conservation Commission and explaining, well, they're, they're a little bit ahead of it. Um, but also um, it requires their signatures. And if I can just add in a, in a much bigger picture, these parcels are part of a, um, actually since 2015, um, it's a, a tri-town effort between Northborough, Berlin, and Boylston, uh, where the three towns um, applied for um, a sum of almost a million and a half dollars from the state, and we were awarded that money to purchase between the three towns um, just about 500 acres of land to preserve as open space. So um, <coughs> although this is being donated to us, the property basically uh, sort of across the town line in Berlin represents part of that whole tri-town project. And there's about um, 95 to 100 acres that the town of Berlin is purchasing from this landowner um, with, with part of these funds uh, back from our 2015 grant. Thank you, Kathy. Questions from the board? Leslie. Thank you, Kathy. Um, uh, is there ever a reason why we wouldn't accept a donation like this? Well, we, um, as staff, we sort of, you know, we vet these parcels that, whether they go to the Conservation Commission or someone just in general approaches the town and says, I'd like to donate, you know, X amount of you know, acres or, you know, square feet. Um, so we go through the parcel and look at it, you know, does it have open space value? Does it have another value to the town? Um, could the town, you know, possibly use it for, you know, park purposes, a building purpose? I mean, it's very rare that we get, you know, high and dry land. Um, it's usually wetlands that someone is, is, you know, looking to donate and to sort of take off of their tax bill. Um, so there certainly has been property in the past. Um, can't think of an, uh, you know, of an exact example for you, but where someone has offered, actually off of Church Street, um, where someone has offered property and, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not the rants, <laughs> but where someone has offered property and it just, it didn't serve any purpose for the town to accept it. So this given that it's next to um, Mount Pisgah and that it also is part of this whole Tri-Town project, that's why the Conservation Commission looked at this, you know, favorably. And is there ever a cost associated, like in, the, in this particular case, is there a cost associated with, with the donation? Um, the, the only cost is, um, is what we do is due diligence in, in involving town council. Okay. Because of course we want to get that, you know, legal review mm -hmm. of, of doing the title search. Um, you know, it, it just it go, going through that process. So, so we've done that and, uh, and they prepared the forms for us. Okay. John, if I may, just there is an opportunity cost here. Uh, Any time a property comes off of private rolls and we accept it, it means those folks will no longer be paying taxes on that. These are relatively small parcels. 
I think the taxes amount to about $1,100 a year, so it's not going to make or break anybody. Um, but that's uh, but that's the other cost uh, if there is a cost. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, just as part of the process, does, is there anything um, done to see if there's been any illegal dumping or any liabilities that come with the the property? On um, on these particular parcels, no, we didn't. We we know the history of these parcels, um, and given the topography, um, it's very unlikely that you know anything has occurred. They're they're not part of a larger farm or anything like that. Um, but certainly on larger parcels, we would absolutely do that. That would be part of our due diligence. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? Madam Mr. Chair. Yes. I move the board vote to approve and execute the quick claim deeds and acceptance of deeds for the two parcels of land located at 0 Howard Street, map 4, parcels 3 and 4, as submitted by town planner Kathy Jubert and approved as to form by town council. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion carries in the affirmative. Thank you. Can I just make a plug for the master plan? You can. It's I know, I know it's not on the agenda, but um, I thought of it today, given your meeting schedule. The master plan is holding a uh, the master plan steering committee is holding the first public forum um, where we are hoping to attract a lot of residents to attend that meeting. It's going to be June twelfth. Um, I can certainly come in to your June eleventh meeting and talk about it a little bit more, but. I just wanted to sort of get the word out. We're going to do a media blitz. Um, it's going to be held at the middle school um, from 6.30 to 8.30 on June 12th. And we'll have um, an overview from our master plan consultants, and then we'll also uh, be breaking down into, um, uh, you know, small groups um, to work on, on various components of the master plan. So um, it'll be the first chance. Again, we've had master plan steering committee meetings, and we'll continue to have those. They're open to the public, but this is where we are, you know, inviting anybody and everybody to attend these. Um, that we're going to have three public forums, and this will be our first. So June twelfth at the middle school, six thirty to eight thirty. Thank you, Kathy. And we urge everyone to try to attend. Thank you. Can I ask a question about that? So I think June twelfth is a public hearing for a business on Main Street, the Tredebi business. Um, is that? Does that pose any kind of problem for you or I, I don't know how many people are interested in that I'm not aware of that I, I know there's an also a, a concert at the high school I, I mean there's never a perfect night but I, I'm not familiar with that public hearing okay. it, it's often that we have multiple hearings and meetings that are occurring at any given time that's not unusual okay. thank, thank you, you thank you <clears throat> okay public comments public okay new business discussion regarding 2018 Apple Fest celebration schedule um, John you want to give some history on this uh, yeah just briefly I, uh, I believe an email went out by the former chairman uh, Jason Pro regarding this issue so two years ago um, we had the sounds 250th celebration uh, the decision was made uh, based on the amount of um, of uh, events that were going to take place and, and basically an unknown factor when you've got that kind of a celebration how many people are going to come so the recommendation from the staff was to split the fireworks and move the parade to Sunday and allow to backfill with the 250th um, celebration events so that occurred uh, the subsequent the year after um, uh, the Apple Fest committee proceeded with the same schedule um, and there was some concern that was expressed about that uh, because the staff at least was under the impression that the 250th was going to be a one-time uh, change. Uh, be that as it may, uh, the staff, as I always say, we will implement the policy decision of the board. So whatever the board wants to do, we will, we will do that. But there was an agreement um, based on uh, last year that we wouldn't move forward with any schedule or make any commitments until all the stakeholders, the primary stakeholders, had a chance to discuss this. Um, for us, logistically, as staff, we really need to know uh, as far in advance as we possibly can what the schedule is going to be. And a couple of months is, is not really enough time for us logistically to plan. Um, based on the fireworks and the parade, um, both those events pretty much require all hands on deck, police, fire, and, and DPW. 
So, um, so again, it's important that whatever decision gets made, that it's made early enough that everybody can plan accordingly, including the Apple Fest committee and the Rotary and the other folks that are involved. Um, but you know, when we're approving things like vacation leave for police and fire, uh, this stuff, we can't just run the department short. Um, we need to make sure that we have the staff. And, it, and, and it's a great deal of scheduling and planning that goes into making sure that we have the appropriate coverage uh, in those departments. So um, really the purpose of tonight is to have the discussion and, uh, and hopefully make a decision. I know the Apple Fest committee and the Rotary and some of the other folks need to get notifications out and certainly the staff needs to know uh, from police, fire, DPW, what are we going to be, uh, what are we gonna be doing this year? Thank you, John. Um, and in our packet, um, we actually had um, a memo from the staff that comes from the public work, the public safety sec sector of the staff, um, asking us to look at it. Um, we also had a letter that was delivered from St. Rose of Lima Church um, asking us to look at it. Um, and the Rotary also would ask us to look at it. And the Interfaith Clergy Association had approached me and called me to say that they have a problem with the Sunday parade. Um, St. Rose's in particular, um, parking at the church and access and getting people into the church and out of the church at the same time as the parade starting. Um, so that being said, um, I guess Michelle, you're, you would like to speak? Um, we thought it would be good to have the Rotary Club speak first so we could hear what they had to say. Okay. Because we we're not, we've, we've never heard about those letters. We don't know exactly what anyone said in those letters. It's the first we've heard of it. The Doyles are here representing the Rotary Club. Would you like to speak? Um, I don't know if we, we did send you, you know, a letter that you have. They did. Um, I think our piece of it is just when, um, is when the street fair is going to be. I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to hinge on the parade. Um, we have said that we would like to have the street fair on Saturday, and we listed the reasons why. But I don't think ours is the, is not the parade situation. I mean, we'd be happy to, you know, read the letter that we sent you if that's. I, that would probably be good. Okay. <clears throat> Rotary Club of Northborough voted last fall that they'd like to have the Apple Fest Street Fair return to Saturday. They additionally expressed the wish that the parade also be returned to Saturday. We have members who are not able to participate on Sunday for a variety of reasons. Since the street fair entails a great deal of work on the day of the event, it's necessary to have almost full club participation. Many of our vendors who traditionally took part in the street fair because it was on Saturday found that the move to Sunday created a hardship or they decided to, to drop out entirely. We also saw a drop of attendance with the move to Sunday with light crowds in the morning due to church attendance and much lighter than expected crowds after the parade due to the last two years to the Patriots game. We also are in competition with Start in the Street in Worcester and uh, we do know they have definitely set their date as that Sunday. It's going to be held on Sunday, September 16th this year. Um, our good craft vendors uh, have told us they'd rather be at that event there are over 300 vendors and many thousands of attendees, and the cost to be in either of the street fairs is, is almost comparable, so they'd rather be in Worcester than be with us. Um, they, they, um, they would come, up oh, see, they would come on Saturday if that was when we had it. And we also mentioned, too, that, one, and I didn't put it in the letter, that a Saturday street fair does allow for a rain date on Sunday. And if not, we've had, you know, we've, that's one of the things our vendors say, what happens if it rains out on Sunday? And we say, it's non-refundable, which is kind of, you know, it's a little hard to say. And when you have it on Saturday, you can, you can have a rain day. So those were the reasons why we would like to see the street fair definitely on Saturday. And it would nice, be nice to have it with the parade. We'd like to have the parade on Saturday too, but we know that's not in our purview to make a decision on that. Okay. Thank you. Um, would you like to hear from the staff too before you? Yeah, and we reached out to the clergy, uh, St. Rose's and Interfaith, and heard nothing from them whatsoever. Really? Nothing at all. Do you want to hear that letter too? Dear committee members, this letter is to the parade committee to let them know our thoughts about the parade being held on a Sunday. It is not so much that it is held on Sunday, but the timing of it. 
The route in front of our, near our worship site, directly impacts our services and how people arrive and leave the church. Many of our congregates volunteer for various aspects of the parade. Thus, many skip services to help with the parade preparations. What does this say to folks about the value of faith and religion? Having an important event like this fairly early in the day on Sunday is a subtle, subtle statement to townspeople that faith and religion are not really that important. It draws some to give priority to parade over worship. We would like to thank you all for your time and commitment in making the town of, of Northboro the great town it is. Sincerely, James Houston. Um, police, um, the police chief, yes. would you like to comment? We'll do whatever the board wants to do. Um, our, our people know that Saturday and Sunday of Apple Fest, it's all hands on deck. No leaves are allowed unless it's approved by me personally. It has to be an accepting, uh, extenuating circumstance. Um, I can tell you that our staff has asked and they would prefer it to be on one day because we have people that have to start at like 6 a.m. to block Blake Street and keep people from parking there. And it goes through all the way to the end of the fireworks. And it just frees them up to be with their family on Sunday. That's their primary concern. Thank you. Chief Parenti? Yeah, very similar to what the police chief said. It's, uh, it, uh, we'll do whatever the board wants us to do. Uh, the staff, uh, my staff has been very clear that it's easier for them to commit one full day than to commit a whole weekend because they want to spend some time with their family. Uh, they work a lot of weekends as it is, so when a weekend comes up that they have off, it's difficult to fill that staffing. But if that's what the board directs us to do, that's what we can do. Thank you. Scott? And public, public Works has the same statement. You know, we'll provide the support needed that the, the board wants. Our biggest challenge, you know, beyond the guys who want to have some time with their families on Sunday is the work effort on Sunday. You know, we're challenged with cleaning up after the fireworks so that the youth sporting events can occur at the school at the same time that the parade is setting up and the street fair is setting up. So we're stretched really thin on Sunday mornings. It's a, it's a challenge to get all three facilities up and running. Understood. Michelle? I have a question. Is we never heard from the Interfaith Society. Did they send a letter as well? or was They it didn't send a letter. They called. They oh. I actually, I brought that up in the fall. They had called me in the fall. Do you want to share your conversation with them? Um, yes. Just the church attendance is low. Um, it's not as much of an issue, they said, with the Catholic churches as it is with the Protestant churches that only have one service. Um, that was their concern. And um, I talked to actually Ernie Revide from St. Rose's. He was the one that called me on behalf of the interfaith clergy. And um, he was just concerned with that. Some of the churches felt that that took away from their services that day. That, this is a recent conversation? You no, had? it was the one I reported on in the fall. But there wasn't one this spring that you had with them? No. Okay. okay. Well, um, yeah, so as the Apple Fest Committee, we actually spoke with our um, the people who are participating um, in Apple Fest weekend, and we have several letters for them. And Laura, if you'd like to share yeah. some I of the also letters. I just say it's really confusing for us. You know, we're a small group, we run a big event, and we rely on a lot of volunteers. We've asked that the selectmen direct any Apple Fest related questions to us so we're not caught in a meeting like this having not heard anything about it. I'm, I'm just disappointed that this is the first that we're hearing, and I feel bad that it's coming up. So if I can just say it would be helpful in the future if you can get feedback on Apple Fest, if you would let us know, that would be great. As far as the letters that I'd like to share, I've got one from the Knights of Columbus. We, the Knights of Columbus, have always participated in the Apple Fest celebration because great opportunity to showcase our organization. We have always strived to be part of the community and to give back as much as we can as a nonprofit fraternal organization. We not only give a scholarship to a graduating senior, but we also donate all of our profit to worthy causes throughout the year. Our belief has been that by separating the parade from the barbecue and fireworks has led to greater participation of our organization, mostly due to our average, average age being between 50 and 75. We physically and organizationally do not have the ability to participate in both events on the same day. We also feel that we participate in more of the activities of other organizations by not being present all day at the parade and the barbecue and fireworks. Apple Fest was founded on the belief that the community would participate in a town-wide weekend celebration. The events would occur over the three days, allowing everyone the opportunity to attend their schedules allowed as their schedules are allowed thus increasing the attendance at all events. 
the Knights of Columbus believe that this is the correct approach. The feedback that I have from the Education Foundation regarding the gala event, it's very difficult for our families to get to the parade on Saturday. Friday is a late night at the gala, and many of the gala attendees rely on high school students as babysitters for that evening. The feedback from the majority of attendees is that the parade is better suited on Sunday because it enables everybody to get a full night's sleep and be fresh for the rest of the weekend. I've got a letter from Mr. Brankel from the voice notes. Our traditional activities for Athletics have mainly been pancake breakfast and the street food. The pancake breakfast is our main resource of fundraising for the troop, providing our annual operating fund. The street fair has been recruiting a recruiting opportunity for starting with general. We usually don't march to the parade. We were a little concerned when the street fair was a Sunday, but have been able to manage both even with the overlap of it. It helps that we have a number of scouts in the troop and a number of volunteer leaders that split between the breakfast and the fair. We've also expanded our coverage of the fair to include the Cub Scouts as well as his help. This year, we are committed to help Nativity with their fall festival on Saturday. <coughs> if the parade and street fair move back to Saturday, that may create a, a, some logistical issues for us to work through. But I don't think they would be insurmountable. I expect there may be some issues with Nativity competing on that day uh, with the street fair on Saturday. I think the main thing from the Apple Fest Committee standpoint is to spread out the activities so that there are not too many conflicts and people are able to enjoy the rest of what that we can have to offer. This is a letter from the North Borough Trails Committee. As you know, the North Borough Town Common Committee held our first farmer's market last year. By all accounts, it was a great success. The vendors were very pleased to sell out most of their products and estimated that more than a thousand people attended. The feedback from the residents of North Borough was also very positive. We are happy to attend an event that they could support our local farmers and buy homemade and handcrafted goods. People are eager to attend our second annual farmers market in the fall. We believe that what contributes we believe that what contributed to making our event such a success was the fact that it was held on Saturday. Many folks came after the road race for other such events such as the library book sale or Apple Pie Cafe. It was wonderful for residents to get a glimpse of what type of events the town common can host in the future. We were hoping that Farmers Market would once again be held on Saturday of Apple Fest weekend. We believe that would provide us with the most shoppers and keep the residents' interest in milling around town for an extended period of time. They also noted that if the parade is moved to Sunday, it will logistically become, I don't know if they'll be able to have the Farmers Market on Saturday because of the parade route and the time that the uh, businesses have to get there, but that's something that we've, we've been discussing. Um, I have a letter from BC14 for our care for troops. We, BC4T, are writing this letter regarding the Apple Fest Parade. We're hoping you will continue to have the parade on Sunday as it has made it possible for our organization to take part in all aspects of Apple Fest weekend. Our group is made up of only a few members. Having the parade on Sunday gives us plenty of time on Saturday to set up our cotton candy popcorn booth at the high school without having to rush last minute and possibly being unprepared for the event, which happens to be one of our largest fundraisers of the year. We feel spacing everything out over the course of the weekend makes it possible for those participating in certain events to be able to attend and enjoy other events they may not have been able to get to, thus ensuring each group participating has a successful turnout. Thank you for taking the time to read this and taking our consideration into <coughs>
though not pragmatic, playing the bagpipes and drums. And the vast majority of parades are held on Sunday because it's the least impact to the traffic through the areas and, uh, and, and in that respect. <coughs> they're either held on Sundays or they're held on an actual holiday like the, the specific day, like the 4th of July. But uh, very, very few towns do have Saturday parades. Thank and you. the last letter I wanted to read was on behalf of the Apple Fest today. Good evening. Thank you for including Apple Fest on this evening's agenda. Many of our members grew up, in this, grew up with this event and continue to work year around to ensure it's still available for future generations to apply and enjoy. In its infancy, Apple Fest started with a couple marquee events, and in the past several years, 24 years, we've expanded to over 26 events. Our landmark events are the fireworks and parades the Apple Fest Committee works tirelessly to support both financially and logistically. In 2017, when the town requested that we move the parade to Sunday, we were on the fence and really struggled to come to an agreement. After meeting with the 250 committee, the Apple Fest team made the decision to work with town and to move to a Sunday parade. We were stunned when we suddenly got feedback that the town businesses, residents, and attendees loved it. The businesses were relieved because the parade no longer impacted their busiest day of the week, Saturday. They are, they are also able to become more active participants in the Apple Fest weekend. Moving the parade to Sunday freed up North Road Girl Scouts to take on a much more active role on Saturday night fireworks by running the carnival game, a huge draw for families. By moving the parade to Sunday, the Church's Activity was able to schedule a Boy Scouts Monkey Bridge for their fall festival on Saturday. Quarter 9 added a fitness expo and kids athletic event because people now have more time to linger. Due to the move Moving the parade to Sunday, the North Town Commons was able to have a farmer's market, which would be uh, not be possible on Saturday if there was a parade. Um, so Apple Fest is growing, and we're so pleased with how it's become such a wonderful event for our town. And it's our goal that we're going to continue to keep growing and to fill out that schedule. So I don't know. Yeah, and if I could just comment, because we interact quite a bit with the businesses. Um, because they participate in Apple Fest by either being part of the street fair, or being part of the parade or advertising. And they were all pleased when we moved to Sunday because the banks didn't have to close early. I know Innovations Hair Salon couldn't take any Saturday afternoon appointments because that's obviously their busiest day and they have to shut down because there's a parade. So it really did have an impact along Main Street um, on the busiest day for small businesses. And we thought, you know, as we talked about this throughout the year, we thought, okay, how can we, if the street fair, and we, we applaud them going to Saturday, goes to Saturday, wouldn't this be a great thing where people come out and go up and down Main Street to shop? They go from the farmer's market to the Apple Pie Cafe, to the book seal, to other businesses who might come out and start to do things and start to promote Main Street and the business from the community that we want. And so we feel that Sunday's better for the parade overall for the businesses as well because they don't have to shut down on their busiest day of the week, weekend. Thank you. And while I do understand that for some people Saturday, um, Sunday is better, my concern is for the staff and the town hall. Um, Northboro has a lot of functions. You're a private organization sponsoring a function that the people of Northboro enjoy very much. But between the road races that come up, that commit DPW, fire and police, um, that it's starting to appear almost every weekend, it's becoming more and more that the staff is being taxed. Questions from the board or comments? Leslie. Well, this is what makes it difficult being on our board. <laughs> because you see things from a resident point of view, and yet we've, we've got to make a decision that is in the best interest of all the various parties here. Um, it was interesting because I think it was two years ago it was moved to Sunday, the parade, Michelle. And I think I saw you and I said, wow, this is kind of kind of nice. It was a little more relaxing, you know, to have the parade on Sunday. It seemed to, the way it was split off a little bit. And I personally liked that. Um, there are just so many different factors and variables here and so many different opinions and, and kind of what one thing affects something else. I think the point about the, um, this, the, um, Farmer's Market is a good one. And the idea of the hope that people will use that as an opportunity to be uptown and, and wander up and down the sidewalks and things like that. Um, so to be honest, I personally don't mind that it's on Sunday. And I, but I do want to hearken back to the letter 
that we got from the DPW, fire chief, and police chief together where you did kind of make a strong statement in this letter. So I guess I need to find out how strongly you really do feel about it because you did say we recommend returning the parade and fireworks to a single day on Saturday. So to me that's the bottom line difference because as a board member I do have to be concerned about your various departments. That's, that's where we are, that's where I am. Um, as a board member, as a resident, I like it on Sunday. I see, and I see the logic behind it. So, so the bottom line for me is how strongly you do feel because you've actually made that statement three, two or three times in this note. So is it a taxing thing for all the departments to be full, as you said, full complement? I, I wouldn't make a statement if I didn't stand behind it. Uh, okay. It is taxing, it's difficult. Uh, it's a hard, hard enough time of year to fill our overtime because there's guys going all, all over the place. And it's, it, it can be difficult to fill all the shifts. If I have to stop people from taking vacation, if I have to force them in, which I'm allowed to in the contract, I can do that. It just doesn't make for the best working atmosphere, obviously. And it's a long day for, you know, to, to, the, the guys are away from their family for both full days. So it's difficult. Again, I wouldn't make the statement if I didn't think it was taxing. Does that, on the other hand, if the board says, do it, we'll make it, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Chief, thank you. I echo what the Chief said as far as um, it's a situation where the, the majority of my offices have expressed their desire to have one long day. Um, when we did it over two days, um, I end up forcing people into work. As the Chief said, that doesn't, that makes the captives versus volunteers, and I want volunteers with smiles on their face. And they'll, they'll, they'll do that, trust me. They'll be voluntold. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have come up with that uh, if it wasn't the case. But, okay. Scott. So we'll provide the services the board chooses. You know, Public Works works 36 hours straight during school events. Um, they're used to doing that. They're not used to doing that in September. It's a long day on Saturday. Coming back on Sunday morning, we do come back on Sunday morning to clean up the, uh, get the fields, make sure everything's ready for the use of wood. <coughs> that day becomes <coughs> another long day. So it's an entire weekend that they're away from their families. Can come in and they'll come in and they'll do a good job and they'll be they'll be pleased by doing it. But it's it's there's not a lot of weekends that public works has. You know, all winter they don't have weekends. This is just another one. It's trouble. It's that. John, thank you. Yeah, if I may, um, you've heard it. They've said it three times each. We're going to do what the board chooses us. Uh, with it. What the board asks of us to do. Uh, that's your decision as a policy making uh, body. I just want to go back to the comment that Laura made at the beginning about you know a lack of communication or, or a concern somehow that there wasn't good communication. Um, we all agreed to move things the year of the 250th celebration. The next year caught the staff by surprise. It caught some, the church uh, caught a number of, of organizations by surprise. The point of tonight is, you know, you're not going to hear from us that we have to have one thing or another. But one of the things that was lacking in the decision was some process. We talk about transparency all the time. We talk about process. There was no transparency and there was no process to that decision. And so that's trying, that's what we're trying to get to tonight. Um, the Rotary, um, the, the, uh, the other community organizations and the staff all have input into this decision and we want you to have that. The board asked, uh, and this is nothing new. Uh, we communicated this uh, at our meetings. I'm not, I don't believe you were at uh, the meetings, um, the planning meetings, um, Laura. Uh, we were working with Michelle, uh, and we, we expressed these concerns at that point in time. Really, the thing for us is uh, that we not be bouncing back and forth uh, from one year to another, that a decision gets made. It doesn't mean we can't um, revisit it at some point. But the idea is that we just need to know for planning purposes so that we can be, be consistent. The other thing that's important is when, whenever anything changes, people complain. Well, they complain to the board members um, because of their positions. They complain to my office. Um, and, uh, and it's important for people to know that there is a process and these decisions are being made in a transparent way. That's what we're trying to accomplish here this evening. Make sure that anybody, the primary stakeholders have a chance to be heard so that everybody understands what deci whatever decision gets made, 
uh, there's an opportunity to be heard and also uh, some understanding of, of some of the considerations. Staff is a consideration. It isn't the end all and the be all, but it is a consideration. And you know where they stand um, and you know that they're going to implement whatever the decision of the board is and that's our job. We do a, we do a lot of things through difficult situations. Well, this isn't gonna kill anybody um, and we'll, we'll implement the decision of the board but it's important that you have that information as well as the wishes of the Apple Fest committee and the Rotary and the churches and everybody. That's the point of having this, uh, this discussion. And that was just, so just in all fairness, that was communicated very clearly back in the fall when, we, when it was decided the second year to split things. Uh, we had many conversations that before anything happens next year, that this kind of a meeting needs to take place. So that was communicated. That that shouldn't be any surprise to anybody. I, I just want to be I just want to be clear about that. Yeah, and I want to react. John, if I could just comment, um, we started emailing the board of selectmen in March of this year. So it's May now. We we emailed, and the year after the 250th, we sat at Pat's house, and everybody got a letter. I don't know if you guys got it, but we all sent them out back in February, and everybody, I'm sorry that you felt like you weren't told, but everybody was sent out letters and everybody was notified. So it came as a surprise to us that you guys weren't told because we mailed them out and all the other 28 or 26 people who were participating knew about it. So we do send you as the Board of Selectmen letters out at the beginning of the year, and we sent it out that year at Pat's house. We addressed them all and sent it. So that shouldn't have come as a surprise last year that we had it. And this year we started emailing the administrator. We got emails back in March. And then um, Jason said, Michelle, we need to start talking about this October meeting. And Jason said, we should have met in October. We didn't for some reason. And so that's why we're here tonight. Jason. Um, yes, all of that is completely true. And um, as the chairman for this past year, I'm gonna take a lot of the responsibility for the conversation not having taken place earlier. Um, I would say that I was preoccupied with some other issues before us. I did see the communications. I knew from past, uh, from the prior year when uh, the parade was held on, uh, on Sunday again, the year following the 250th, I was surprised to see that myself. And uh, we had in mind that we wanted to have a meeting of everyone involved in order to decide what the priorities were and well, how the decision would get made. So. I agree there's been a lack of communication in part coming back from the Board of Selectmen and for this past year's cycle I take responsibility for that because that's something that I should have uh, taken more initiative with been more proactive with to do that um, so that said <laughs> um, can I, I just ask one other question can that you let him finish Michelle can you let him finish please um, I think my position on this personally is that um, the change was made for a particular reason for the year of the 250th anniversary. Um, I don't think it was understood or expected at that time that that was a permanent change. And that change does have an adverse, I don't know if you'd call it an adverse impact, but it does have an unexpected impact or an undesirable impact for some of the parties involved. Um, it's to the benefit of some, it's to the detriment of others. And so it's a complex thing, and there's no one right answer um, for this. So uh, to that end, I think it is important that we do engage in some communication much earlier in the process to plan it out, to understand all the parties' interests. Um, in the end, we're not going to have a solution that's going to satisfy everybody. Um, that's just the circumstance. So. Can you hear from the board first if there's anyone else from the board that would like to say something? Tim? Uh, I just have one. The, 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 if the issue is is staffing for the event, is there, is there any way for, for the Apple Fest committee to outsource any of the staffing so that the, I know that the fire and the police can't be outsourced, but any of the DPW work or the cleanup, can any of that be outsourced to, to reduce some of the burden on, on town staff? I'd ask Scott to respond to that. Yeah, the uh, farmer's market took care of their own trash last year through the costs associated with it. That was a big help. One well, less thing we had to do. You know, if they wanted to outsource trash pickup, I, I don't know what there's the open for for that, and I don't know what, you, what your finances are. They seem like they're going to stretch pretty thin when we're talking about the farmer's market. 
So if they had the if they had the resources, they could do it. If they have the resources, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But the fireworks, you were. No, we will. We'll manage. The, we'll clean up the school fireworks. The street fair is a street fair. The the farmers markets. Their farmers market. There's a standalone event. We'll still manage all the traffic associated with the parade. That's our responsibility. So if the parade is on a su Sunday, you're still we'll working. Still okay. John, so if we were excuse me. I just wanted to comment, to Tim. So most of the, the stuff that DPW is doing, it's, it's a lot of you know heavy equipment moving, light towers we're doing. Mm -hmm. Most of the things that they do and the services they provide aren't something that would be easily easily outsourced. Yeah, but if there was pieces of it that could. Yeah, and I, th I think the Apple Fest committee does a great job, actually, uh, between volunteers and taking care of the things that they can they can take care of. I don't. There's there may be an opportunity to, for a couple of things, but on the larger scale, we're still going to require all of our, our all of our staff. So could we outsource some of the services for the weekend to solve the staffing problem that we're dealing with, or is that not something? Yeah. Well, the reality is the the issue is the fireworks in the parade. Those are such big events. We need all hands on deck for those. So um, most of your other events, you know, like the car show and and uh, a taste of Northboro, those types of things, they don't require really any any staff uh, attendance. It's it's the parade and the fireworks that are that are command uh, performance or, or attendance from all the staff because it's just they're public safety issues and you can't outsource the public safety. And DPW is actually a component of that public safety traffic <coughs> control, crowd control, things of that nature. The only, the only components that would be eligible would be trash removal um, at the different events, the, the um, farmer's market, the street there, well, trash removal. The farmer's market did their own trash removal last year. But that's something that we can consider doing. Yes. David Gillespie, 117, I won't speak. <coughs> as far as the police and the fire, could we pick up some people from other towns? I mean, Westboro police guy can stand in the street just like a Northboro police guy. I mean, there are, I'm sure there are other circumstances where towns cooperate. And, you know, maybe if we're short two or three guys, we could go to Westboro, we could go to Southboro, and we could pick up a couple of bodies that way. Chief. I was just notified by the Westboro police chief that their offices can no longer work over here on our details because of their liability issues. We can call them on mutual aid for emergencies, but this is a scheduled event, not an emergency. Does that apply to all towns around us? Uh, we're the only, I was informed lately that we're the only town that was, uh, doesn't have, uh, what the other towns do is they put other officers on the town's payroll. And when they come over here to work at detail, they get paid as though they're a North Road employee, and that adds liability costs to the town, and we don't allow that. I have no control over who comes in here. I know my people and what their training levels are. Yeah, and that was part of accreditation, too. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that this, this it would be a hardship for the committee to to change the whole schedule. Yeah. And but is there so the Rotary Club with the conflict from art and art in the street in Worcester, that's kind of a big deal. And um, and the services on Sunday. Is, is there any way you can tweak the schedule to? Well, we don't start the parade until 1 o'clock in oh. the afternoon. So that should I mean, we could push it even out to 2 o'clock, and then it sort of feeds the taste of Northboro. We, we don't have a problem with that. Uh-huh. Okay. So maybe that. Any other discussion from the board? Any other discussion from the public? I think I saw the fire. I read all the letters. Hmm? I read everybody's letters that came out from the different groups for us. Do I hear a motion? Can I just ask one more question? So if so you're you're saying that this is um, becoming a very popular event, increasingly so over the last few years. So if if we decide to do it in the two days as as you have outlined this is something that we will have that we will just know from year to year now that it will be a two-day event until it is no longer as popular as, as it is Which I hope that day never happens. right 
And I should also say I'm grateful for all the DPW and the police and the fire. And I also want to say our volunteers who come out for the Girl Scouts, they start Saturday morning, the Boy Scouts, and they, they are keeping the same hours and they're doing it out of love for the community. And I know that I, I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not um, I'm not saying anything bad about the people that are sacrificing their time with family to work, but this is a, a big community endeavor for everybody and our groups are multiply involved. They the volunteers are what make this possible. And we're representing those twenty five different groups, those organizations in our town who come out because As someone that was involved with the 25th, uh, the 250th, excuse me, as somebody that was involved with the 250th and it was the intention to have the parade on Sunday, it was never the intention that the parade would stay on Sunday. When it was discussed, it was a one-time thing. Then last year, it continued on Sunday. But as somebody observing from the outside, I think the Sunday parade is losing interest. I mean, when we marched last year, when we got to the center of town, didn't seem to have half the number of people. It seems as if the Rotary Fair, um, Street Fair, and the Farmer's Market could be all held on Saturday with the parade going through. It seems like it would bring more people to the center of town and more interest in the parade. So that's my thought. Um, and my concern for DPW, fire, and uh, police. Yes. Uh, I'd just like to say that um, I've been part of the parade probably for as long as we've had the parade. I think it's growing every year. I think we have more people out. And I think having it on a Sunday gives people the opportunity to make it a three day. They go to the gallery, they go to the farmer's market, the street fair, the book sale, the apple pie cafe. Then they go to the fireworks where there's numerous organizations that are running fundraisers. If everything's crammed into one day, something's gonna lose and it's gonna be the people who have these organizations who do these things as fundraisers. And I think having a fresh start on Sunday morning, we start with the car show, everyone can go to church and still get out, plenty of time, so there is no parking issue, there's no faith issue as far as somebody not being able to get to church if we move the parade a little bit later. And then it's something that feeds into the taste of Northborough. And I personally was the one directing everyone into the parade last year, and then I ran probably a mile and a half to catch up to my own float. Don't give me a fucking pretty. <laughs> but by the time I got down to the center of town, there was a ton of people down there. Where? Any more discussion? Leslie? Yeah, I just think it's kind of good to kick, keep kicking this around a little bit. Um, because right now, to me, the issues are, it's a, it's a cost-benefit thing, really, in terms of what are we doing to our staff um, with this particular event, if we leave it on Sunday. Um, but on the other hand, what are we doing to the Apple Fest committee if we say now that it's mid-May? I think we need to revert back to what we had been doing. I do understand that it was not the understanding that maybe we'd continue this way, but at this point, I wonder how awful would it be, I'm just throwing this out there, if we kept it the way you are planning it now and maybe have this as an agenda item in October um, so that no one is planning really anything yet. Um, because our board does need to be involved. We are very much responsible for what goes on with our staff. And we work very closely with DPW, fire, and police. And we have to watch out for their benefit and their welfare as well. So I don't want to be insensitive to that. But I think the timing right now is of concern to me because there are a lot of wheels in motion right now. And what are we doing if we change it back? So I do hear what Dawn was saying, that that was the understanding that it wasn't going to continue, but maybe if we leave it the way it is right now with a caveat that everybody nicely meets together in October and everyone is of the understanding that we need everyone's input, that we're all stakeholders, and that we all sit down and talk about it and kick it around as far as um, benefits to, to either situation. So that's my suggestion at this point. Anyone else? Do I have a motion? I 
guess I have to flip a coin. <laughs> if I, can I just say something? Sure. The staff will make it work. Whatever you want to do, the staff will make it work. I move the board vote to hold the fireworks on Saturday and the parade on Sunday of the annual Apple Fest weekend for 2018. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Opposed. The motion carries in the affirmative. Good. Thank you. I, I would like to add just as my personal statement on this, um, due to the lateness of the process here and the effort that the Apple Fest committee has put into it, um, that's the final thing I guess that swayed my opinion. But the fact that we will have had this three years running now for the 250th last year and then this coming year is not necessarily my final position on this matter. And we do need to have this conversation earlier um, and make sure that all the interests, all the considerations are planned earlier to accommodate everything. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Execution Thanks of Cemetery coming. Deed 1048. Madam Chair, I move the board vote to execute Cemetery Deed 1048 as submitted. Second. Motions oh, remain seconded. All those in favor? Okay. And any other business to come before the board? Motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to remain seconded. All those in favor? Thank you.